Hello, how are you guys? Me. Hey. Oh, it's so good to see you both. I, oh, yeah. You know, I love these movies so much, and I love, I love you two in them. And I love your bob and your handlebar mustache. Hey, thank you. You like this? Love it. This is I how I start so off my year. I'm glad. It's, thank it's you. So good. <laughs> Well, I guess I want to start off with, like I said, I love these movies and I, I, your performances, both of them just keep growing and keep, they move me, honestly. It's like a love story. Uh -huh. Has it changed yeah. at all, like the third film in? No, man, I, I just think, look, I think that outside of like, if you actually sat the, the film version of Lorraine Warren down in a marriage counseling session, I don't think she would say everything's so hunky dory. I think she would say that, you know, that the demons are a real downer in this marriage. I've had enough. Um, but I think that, I think that that togetherness, right. And they're just like, it gets harder and harder. And, and I mean, Lorraine said this to us, it's like every case just took so much more out of, out of her, but that what she got from it, from, sh from the, you know, but I guess the, the return after, you know, after, it's like when you, the benefits of showing that compassion sort of pulled her through to the next one. But um, what do you want to say about this, Mr. Wilson? I'm just listening <laughs> to you. <laughs> I'm do that all day, though, Patrick. On our, fake, on our fake marriage, just me. <laughs> What's that? Kidding? What'd you say? I couldn't, couldn't, I agree with you. Couldn't you just listen to Vera all day, man? Just talk about this stuff. It's all good. <laughs> Floundering. <laughs> yeah, I like to watch it kind of flounder. <laughs> <laughs> figure out what you're saying, not answer the question, <laughs> go on a different tangent. This is just uh, fun. <laughs> I like your shirt, uh, by the way, uh, Satanic Thank Panic, you. which plays a little bit into this. Oh, did you guys look into that? Because I remember that period, like especially hearing those stories. Did you, I guess, Patrick, I'm going to look at your shirt. Did you guys talk about that while you were doing this film? Not, not really, because it doesn't really affect how we're playing it you know what i mean i i think if anything it's a it's maybe a shop's decision you know our director michael to um maybe in the surrounding um uh, yeah i i don't know that that's necessarily it's you know anytime you're dealing with like themes or what was going on in the world it's it's you you, you have to you gotta just focus on your story <laughs> the story that you're telling and this is 1981 so it's sort of the beginning of that that happened in the 80s you know really um yeah, but we didn't really get into too much of the satanic panic at that point. Um, it was really because this, honestly, the case was so um, horrifying that if you just think about the logistics and the details of the case, you, you don't really have to add anything around it. It's pretty brutal. Yeah, no, that's very true. V Vera, I know you, the first film, you had a scratch on you. Have you ever had anything like that happen again? Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. Yes. Go, yes. I mean, just the other day I called him up and I told him my, my, my toilet paper is shredding into these like various size claws. And he Wait. just laughs at me. No, but he in laughs. fairness, it did it. Did you find out the result? Jimmy, look at this. Look at that. <laughs> he doesn't have time for this. He's got like 20 <laughs> seconds. I know. Oh, I I I I I oh no. I where is it? Oh my God. <laughs> These weird like claw looking like slices of toilet paper kept appearing on the ground uh, under her toilet paper roll. If I can say <laughs> toilet paper over and over, because that's certainly scary. But I don't know the end result, Jimmy. We don't know what happened. I ran out. The toilet, I just kept using it until it ran out. And the next toilet paper roll was fine. <laughs> you had a possessed toilet paper roll. Haunted toilet paper roll. That's here, here's the video. Oh. Uh, I guess it doesn't have time. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Isn't it weird? That is weird. It is weird. <laughs> Possessed? I'm not sure, but weird. I mean, they say well, weird things happen all the time, but. Who knows? Well, we got to wrap it up. And then I, you guys are great. I'm such fans of both of yours. And I, and I love this movie. I love seeing you guys in these roles. It's just oh, a, a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.
Yes, Jimmy O from JoeBlow.com. Michael, it's so good to see you again, of course. Uh, I gotta say, you know, the thing is, I, I talked, I was thinking about our conversation, and one thing I wanted to ask you about is how, can you talk about kind of taking the real exorcism that actually took place and kind of creating it as a cinema event? How, how did you pick and choose what to use in that sequence? I don't think we talked about that in detail. Yeah, it's it's a great question. The that's the the exorcism is what opens the movie. It is, you know, based on this real the real exorcism of David Glatzel. That the, there was actually multiple exorcism, and there's multiple accounts. the 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 true story there, you know, this this lasted with the Warrens were involved with this family for months. Uh, they brought in a series of priests, sometimes one at a time, sometimes two at a time. And there was a total of six priests that, that went through, uh, through the house. And so everyone has varying accounts because everyone experienced something different. The, you know, some of the, one of the things that both the priests, the Warrens, Arnie and Debbie do talk about is him levitating, him speaking in, in Latin, really you're, these extraordinary uh, things that that really de defy. I mean, you, you've you've heard the uh, the recording, of course. Yeah, you you saw the. Um, oh yeah, you showed me, man. <laughs> <That's> yeah. <creepy. laughs> um, I, I think that you know we when we were looking at it, you know, from the beginning, you know, I looked at the 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 recordings. I, I read a lot of the interviews. And, you know, part of it is creating something that separates from what we've already seen and what we've seen in The Exorcist. And, you know, without a doubt, there's, a, you know, I have that nod to The Exorcist in the beginning. And a lot of the accounts of that experience actually feel very familiar and they feel very much in line with The Exorcist. And I, I could have kept to exactly the, the, the true story and exactly the way it was described. I think that it was more, it was important for me to, especially if I was going to do a nod to The Exorcist, that it couldn't be like The Exorcist at all. It needed to be its own thing. And we really were kicking the tires on, how do we do that? How do we create something that is, this, this child is being tortured, this child is being ripped apart from the, from the inside. And how do we do it in a way that we haven't seen before? And that becomes very tricky because there is such this great legacy of not just the exorcist, but we've seen so many exorcisms in, in films and especially in the, the first conjuring and, you know, many, many others. So how do we make it feel real and tactile and also in camera? You know, I, I think that uh, the Contrary movies have set up that expectation that if you're going to do it, you got to do it for real. There needs to be something that's real and tactile and in camera. And so we started talking about just different approaches. And then we, I started talking to my, um, my stunt coordinator, Glenn Foster, who is incredibly talented. And we started just talking about contortions and we started, it, that became very tricky because David, you know, uh, Julian Hilliard is so small and there's not many people that can double him, but he put out the call and he found this, this amazing young girl named Emerald Wolf and she's a contortionist and, and we brought her in we sh started workshopping and she could just do these incredible things. And, you know, also very fast. I think that that was one of the things that was really striking is she could get into these, these positions really quickly. And part of it was actually because she, she had this very small frame and she was a near perfect match for Julian. And we just started organically going through that down that road. And it was interesting because the, you know, the, the shot that's in the trailer where she does this back bend and then snap up. Um, I'm not too, I forget if I'm repeating myself, but I'll just. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. That was something that, First of all, she could do, we could probably make a whole movie of her just doing crazy contortions. She was, it was, it was like the buffet of weird demonic <laughs> positions and stuff. I was like, this is so unsettling. And I think we, we picked at least, you know, what I thought was the best. That was one, this kind of like going from lying down to a back bend and then snapping up. That was something originally she did very slowly. And that's how we rehearsed it and we prepared that scene. And it just felt like, honestly, kind of like a throwback to, um, 
to the exorcist and, you know, the head doing a 360, there's something about the slowness of it that I just thought that this is how you do it. And we did that a few times. And then I just asked her, you know, can you do it any differently? Is there anything like an alt take we could do? And she said, I could just do it really fast. And she, she did it and it was extraordinary. She just snapped up and that with the, the shot in the trailer, same in the movie, that was not speed ramped at all. There was no, the only visual effect on that is that we put Julian's face on her body, but what she's doing, the speed she's doing it, that's all in camera. And it, I think that you can feel it. You can feel it when you see it. And there's also something about it, the fact that it does go so quick that it doesn't, we're not, we're almost not showing off. We're just being ruthless in, in how we're torturing this, this, this poor child. You know, that's the, how the, uh, that was the kind of the goal of the the sequence. <laughs> well, dude, we, we got wrapped up already. What? Uh, uh, Jimmy, yes. no. <laughs> we we got to do a ghost hunt, man. I'm telling you, got to do a ghost hunt next time. Seriously, I would love to. That'd be awesome. Okay, you're in. Get, hit me up, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I can't believe it was that short. I, I, I honestly could talk to you I for know. so much longer. That was such a blast. I love that podcast, man. It was so great to talk to you. Thank you so much, dude. You are the best. And I look forward to continuing our conversation. Yeah, totally. Very much. Yeah, that was too short. <laughs> it was, it was. I was like, wait, we just got started. <laughs> oh my God. I feel so 